everybody, it's Megan Thrasher here with the Juro team of EXP Realty. In today's video, I want to go ahead and talk about house hacking and what house hacking is. And like, how can you get into it? Like what, what are some tips and tricks? Like why house hack? So let's go ahead and start by going over what house hacking is. So really house hacking is basically you're buying a primary resident that has some other units in it. So you, you can buy a primary residence with up to four units in the building. Anything over that's going to be considered commercial, but you can get a primary residence loan, which is great because interest rates tend to be better. It's usually easier to get that kind of a loan. So allowing you to go up to four units in like a multi-family property is a great way to get your foot into the door, get your your toes a little wet in real estate investment. Or if you're just looking for a way to own a home, to own your home and maybe lower your mortgage payment or even have your whole entire mortgage payment paid for you, house hacking can be a great tool. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit more of the details. So basically if you are someone who wants to own a home but you're finding it a little bit too costly to own your own home and maybe you know, you don't want to pay a mortgage payment all on your own, then house hacking could be a really great way for you to own a piece of property and lower or not pay for your mortgage. So I want to go over with you guys some of the benefits of house hacking. Obviously, one that we already touched base on is reducing or completely eliminating your housing cost. So if you are living in one of the units in your property and then you rent out the other units, then that will help to eliminate or reduce the monthly mortgage payment that you have on that property because you have other people renting from you, you have other people paying you money to live there and that money can go towards your mortgage. You can also gain flexibility through house hacking. So you can start off by having this property as your primary residence. If in the future you want to move or you need to upgrade to a larger home, a larger single family home, then this can give you the flexibility to just make this once a primary residence, but renting out the other units, to other people into an into an investment opportunity, into an investment property strictly, where you no longer live there, it's no longer your primary residence, and you're able to continue to gain that that passive income, gain, generate that income from that property, but then live in another area, another home, wherever. Obviously, I think one of the biggest benefits is growing your wealth through passive income. Just like I said in the last benefit with having that flexibility, you will have the possibility of gaining that passive income through this really investment. Um, again, people are paying rent typically is higher than what the mortgage payment actually is. So you can start generating passive income and you could have a set amount of income every month coming your way. You know, you're going to have it and you can take that income. You can take that passive income and start investing into other properties or other sorts of investments, whatever really you want to do. You could bank it, you could save it, but it's just a really great possible way of making that passive income. And again, I think really when it comes down to the benefits of house hacking, it's really, really, really financial. So when you're looking at house hacking, you're building equity instead of paying rent every month, you're the one building the equity by others paying you the rent. And this will allow you to reduce, dramatically reduce your overall housing costs and then allow you to save, invest, just like what I just said about getting that passive income, right? So we're gonna generate that passive income through house hacking. And now we have the ability to take that income and do other things with it. Save it, reinvest, whatever it might be, whatever that looks for you. House hacking can be a great way to ease yourself into the rental property career. It could be a great way to put your, again, put your foot in the door to be able to start your investment portfolio. Again, with house hacking, it's a little bit easier than possibly getting, having to get 
an investment loan just because when you are getting a loan for investment when you're looking to finance an investment property typically you're going to have to need a higher down payment also a lot of the times the interest rates on those types of loans are more than a conventional FHA, a traditional just primary resident home. So it's a good way to get your foot into the door with real estate investment, being able to get the primary re residence financing with a lower down payment. And again, all of the financial benefits that come from house hacking, reducing your mortgage payment or eliminating it, generating that passive income, and being able to increase your savings and your investments. Okay, so now that we kind of went over house hacking, what it is, what you can you get out of house hacking, I wanna go ahead into how do you even begin? So just like anything, just like if you were buying a single family home, you need to figure out the financing. So you need to get in touch with a local lender, someone who's reputable, make sure you reach out to uh, your local real estate agent in order to get that resource to someone who, for a lender that is well-versed on house hacking, well-versed on investments, well-versed on getting a multifamily resident loan. You're gonna need to figure out what type of loan you want and what kind of down payment are you going to need in order to obtain the loan. Also keep in mind when you're getting this loan for house hacking, again, it is a primary resident. It will be a primary resident loan. You will need to occupy one of those units. Once you figured out your financing, then it's time to start looking for the property. And now it's time to find the best property for you to house hack. When purchasing a multifamily unit, you or multifamily property, you are going to want to know, well, first off, what kind of rents am I going to be charging? What kind of income am I going to be generating? What kind of deal, how much am I paying for this house? And will those numbers make sense? Will all those numbers add up and make sense for what your goal is with house hacking? When you're looking for the best property, uh, think about what's going to suit you the best. Again, you can find multifamily residences that have additional dwelling units in them that are all separate. You can have multiple bedrooms that you're renting out. You can easily convert areas. A lot of single family homes might have a basement that's been converted into a whole apartment unit into a whole nother living unit for uh, someone to rent out, you know, equipped with bedrooms, kitchen, living room, all of that. Uh, so think about where you want to buy the property as well. Is it near public transportation? Is it going to be an area without restrictions? Make sure the living spaces are comfortable. Things like that are some things you need to keep in mind when you are looking at properties that you want to potentially house hack with. And again, once you've found that property, the next step would be to run those numbers. Make sure that you're getting a good deal on the property and making sure that rent with the rental income, property taxes, insurance, keeping maintenance and repairs in mind, utilities, all of those things, any operating expenses that you might have, keeping those in mind, running those numbers and seeing, well, is my monthly mortgage payments going to be this? My utilities are going to be around this. I want to factor in this much for maintenance, this much for taxes, and this is what I'll charge for the rent and make sure that it's going to add up in you producing positive cash flow and possibly living at your property for free. So at the end of the day, you're going to wanna make sure that those numbers work for you and your financial goals. Those are the three things that you're going to need to think about when going through the process of buying a home to house hack with. Some mistakes that you want to avoid are you know, picking a home in an undesirable neighborhood, ignoring local ordinances, for getting to budget for repairs because now essentially you are the landlord and you're going to be the one that's going to be responsible for collecting rent, making repairs, keeping the property in good condition. So you wanna make sure you're taking those duties seriously and you're also going to wanna to set tenant boundaries as well. It's always important to have an agent along with you on this ride. They're going to be able to guide you and advise you in the ways that's going to make sense for you, that's going to help you reach your goal, all while protecting you. Let's go ahead and just summarize real quickly about house hacking. So house hacking when done correctly is a great way to generate passive income and quickly pay off your mortgage and reduce your overall housing costs for yourself. And again, in return, increasing the amount of cash flow 
that you have that you're going to be able to then reinvest in other ways. Through house hacking, this can be a great way for you to incredibly increase your wealth and grow your wealth through real estate and it could be serving as a pathway for you to have financial freedom. So if you have any other questions about house hacking, please feel free to reach out. I am more than happy to help you if you are looking or interested in doing this. Thanks for watching this video. And if you learned a lot from it, be sure to like the video, comment down below, is house hacking something you would be interested in doing? Let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want more content like this. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.